Athletes are doing their part on and off the court to fight for social justice, and our next guest is one of them. New Orleans Pelicans player Drew Holiday has pledged his remaining 2020 NBA salary as a step toward combating systemic racism to provide insight into funding and tracking its impact. Holiday used technology platform Resilia. So joining us now is NBA star himself, Drew Holiday, and Savitra Wilson, who is the founder and CEO of Resilia. Great to have you both here with us today. Super excited for this discussion. Uh, Drew, if we may, let's start with you. How do you and other athletes truly evaluate which organizations and initiatives the pledged salaries will go towards? Um, honestly, it's a lot of research. Um, we've done a pretty good job of putting the background checks and being able to uh, trust people like Savitri um, and even finding her in the business that she does. Um, she's obviously her record has been has been awesome. So uh, for us to kind of kind of hook up with Savitri and for her to have so much knowledge on, on this issue and hands on the ground in so many places has been big for uh, what me and my wife want to do. And Savitri, so for those who may not know, tell us more about Resilia, what the platform does, some of the players that you're already working with in addition to Drew. So Resilia is a SaaS technology platform serving a double-sided market. On one side, we're helping nonprofit organizations increase their capacity. And so we're doing everything from digitizing uh, educational resources to how to effectively fundraise, specifically for those nonprofit organizations, um, helping them simplify their reporting, particularly because we know for nonprofits, particularly those led by um, people of color, they have a hard, difficult time not only getting to the table, but once they get to the table, actually winning and being awarded um, fundraising opportunities is very difficult. Um, on the other side of our platform, we're serving entities such as cities, corporations, public charities, and foundations like the Lauren, uh, Drew and Lauren Social Justice um, Fund. And for us, we understand in order to really scale impact, we have to be able to monitor various initiatives, deliver additional resources, quickly to organizations, um, we have to help them scout, right? So to be able to pick uh, the organizations who are on the ground doing the work across all these cities um, that mean a lot to them that they want to support in addition to those small businesses. And so we are utilizing reporting um, through our on-demand platform to not only create this collective impact uh, model, but to also measure impact over time. And you really do have to measure impact over time mm -hmm. and give opportunities for organizations to really do the work if you want to uh, see for systemic change. I think that's a really great point. And with the funds that do get allocated, when you're talking about overtime, take us into that time span that you will typically look at some of the funds going towards initiatives, organizations, and then go back to a person like Drew or someone of the like and say, hey, here's what has actually been done. Here's how far that dollar has been stretched over that period of time. What is that period of time? Absolutely. And so for this particular initiative uh, with Drew and Lauren, their social justice um, initiative, they want to see sustainable change. They want to see solutions that go beyond just them giving out a check. And so they're really heavily involved with that work. And most people who really do want to have an impact are. And so we're looking at a three-year timeline. And so the organizations, uh, as well as small businesses who are applying now, they should rest assured that this won't be the last time that we're giving out funding and that Drew and Lauren, um, they'll hear from Drew and Lauren because this is an ongoing um, process. Absolutely. Uh, Drew, swinging things back your way, because as we're watching all of the response, the, the outpouring either monetarily from athletes or even just lending a voice and using the platform that you do have. Um, there's a hip hop artist, musical artist Lecrae, who said, if you're more upset about the athletes boycotting than you are about the death, division, and discrimination in our society, your priorities are wrong. Uh, what do you say to fans out there that are just now getting educated on some of the very systemic issues that have gone on for so long and you're still trying to ensure that you are educating them at the same time to ensure that they're with you on these movements as well. Yeah, um, I guess one thing that I would say is better late than never. Um, uh, we, we know how this kind of goes. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that people are open to um, being educated and learning something different about a, a different culture. Um, just having friends and being in a biracial relationship, uh, things that me and my wife had to have conversations about and things that we went through as a couple being stopped by cops and, and things like that and having that conversation, I feel like helps so much. So 
uh, just to continue to have the conversation with with uh, with friends and family and and even bigger than that, people that you don't know and people that are able to um, accept somebody else's point of view uh, of their life or how they perceive things, I think is is very excuse me very important. And for for both you and Lauren, I mean your household is truly unique, Drew, in that both you and Lauren are professional athletes. Uh, women's national soccer team, of, of course, was involved in an ongoing legal battle of its own. And, and similarly, though, you on the basketball side, you have the WNBA players raising their voices for better parity. Um, how can the NBA players further lend their voices uh, to the WNBA players' requests for better pay and adequate benefits as well? Um stay in constant communication um, with them like we have been doing. Um, you know, our sisters over there, they're, uh, they're a hell of athletes. And, and I think for them to, to have people like us or brothers like us to be able to stay on their side and really put our foot forward for them is, is uh, something that we love to do. Um, obviously, my wife being an athlete, um, we have part stake in uh, Angel City uh, soccer team out here. And my, my daughter, who's three years old, just growing up in um, pretty much has no choice, but is pretty much an athlete at, at three years old, um, get to grow up and show. So I feel like we want to give women in general, but especially little girls, that same ability to, to um, have that same, um, you know, uh, ability to go out there and make money and, and to have that popularity that, that they have, same as guys. So um, growing up a girl dad or, or being a girl dad, and uh, my wife being part owner in that team and having the WNBA has been huge for my family just from the standpoint of uh, not only we support Black Lives Matter, but we support women's sports uh, the most in this family. Absolutely. Um, look, just while we have you as well here, uh, I got to know, when, when you think about the communities that need funds and, and Savitra, I'll direct this one to you. Um, the current structure does not adequately allocate capital, but communities are also demanding a reversal of overtly and implied discriminatory practices. So how does Resilia also prioritize influencing public policy in addition to allocating capital in the right direction? So for us and through the work that we're doing with so many other, so many organizations, it's about building a critical mass of mobilized organizations um, and those who are supporting them, who are informed and well equipped with their information and tools to impact policy, right? And so communities are powerful within themselves, but even more powerful when they have the data and the insights of how to mobilize their communities, how they can benefit from the resources. And um, the communities ultimately are able to capture people, but it's about how do you do that, right? How do you utilize these uh, this critical mass of mobilized uh, individuals via organizations to really influence policy and change that ultimately um, benefits those communities that they're serving, and those communities benefit from their resources and their mission. And so it's really about utilizing our platform um, to bring organizations together, for them to see quickly how to um, move together um, and really make this type of change. Absolutely. Such a pleasure to have you both here with us today. Uh, Drew, you will always be a Philadelphia 76er and me as a Philly native, um, but you are the NBA All-Star and New Orleans Pelican. Uh, Drew Holiday, thank you so much for joining us. And Savitra Wilson, can't wait to check back in with Savitri, founder and CEO of Resilia.